Hello everyone, my name is Devendra Kapadia and I work as a kernel developer at Wolfram Research. Now in this presentation, I would like to give you an introduction to the exciting new functionality for symbolics and numerics in version 11. This is a vast area of functionality including partial differential equations, differential eigensystems, systems, symbolic and numeric calculus, and algebra and number theory. So what I'll do is to give you the highlights for each area followed by a brief example, and then we'll take a tour of the feature page for that area. So let's begin with partial differential equations. Now, the highlights in this area, uh, first of all, DSOLVE can now find symbolic solutions of boundary value problems for classical and modern PDs. Now by classical, I mean things like the heat, wave and Laplace equations. And on the modern side, we've got the Schrodinger and other PDs. The whole field of symbolic solutions of PDs depends upon stem layable problems, and we can solve these with DSOLVE as well. On the other hand, NDSOLVE can now handle uh, periodic boundary conditions and also events using when event. So put together, this is a very nice big improvement over earlier versions. So uh, let's take an example of a vibrating circular membrane. So I start with the radial wave equation, I give some boundary conditions over here to say that, for example, the value of the function is zero at the boundary, and then I give the problem to desolve to solve. Now we have many methods available for this problem, or uh, the problems. We've got a Fourier transform method, the Laplace transform method, etc. In this particular case, we use separation of variables, and so when the answer comes back, it's going to be an inactive sum which can be used for later work. So we have support for regions and for various kinds of PDs and solving them in symbolic form. Now, the solution in this case is going to be an infinite symbolic sum, which I take, and then one can easily create an animation. So here's the animation of the circular membrane, and it's quite nice to see it being done with DSOL and the new functionality. So if you'd like further examples for PDs, they are available right here on the feature page. So the first row over here is the classical PDs, then you have the term level problems, and the all-important numerical solutions. And finally, we go back to applications of the symbolic solutions. So we have the stretch string, quantum mechanics, call options, and various other nice options. So that's about PDs, and I now go on to differential eigen systems. So over here, on the first hand, we have D eigen system and ND eigen system, which can compute symbolic and numeric eigenvalues and eigenfunctions over regions. You can also add arbitrary time derivatives, like in the heat equation. You can add constraints to your problems, and you can solve problems with coupled PDs. So put together, this is a brand new, wonderful eigensystem solver. Okay, so an example of this, let's try and compute the acoustic eigenfunctions for a mini. So I import the model. And when that's done, we'll simply discretize it, like I do over here. Use ND eigensystem, and then I put everything together, and I get back the original car along with an eigenfunction on top. So if you'd like more examples of this area, here you are. So that's differential eigen systems. We have the Laplace equation, the Schrodinger equation, et cetera, and the first two rows for numerical eigenvalues. That's the eigenfunctions over an L-shaped region. We have other numerical applications. Then we have the quantum harmonic oscillator. So put together, this gives you several ways of approaching the same problem symbolically or numerically. I now go on to symbolic and numeric calculus. And over here, um, at least for me, one important feature is the solution of linear integral equations, which has been requested by Stephen Wolfram and many others over the years. We can also solve large numerical optimization problems using the IP opt library, which is now hooked up to find minimum. You can compute areas using curvy linear coordinates, not just Cartesian coordinates. 
and we have brand new functions for computing Mellon-Trans forms of functions. So as an example of integral equations, this is the tautochrome problem, which requires finding a curve down which, if you place a bead anywhere, it will fall to the bottom in exactly the same time. Now this involves solving an Abel integral equation. So that's the equation. We solve the desolve value, and after a bit of work, you can actually simulate the tautochron, and you can see over here that the bead can start anywhere it likes, but it always reaches the bottom at exactly the same time. So there are many more beautiful examples on the feature page for symbolic and numeric calculus. We have the Mellon transforms over here, difference quotient, fine minimum, integral equations, Green's function, and then the so-called Maya G reduce, which tries and expresses functions in terms of Maya G. So again, we have a wonderful collection of elementary and advanced functions for symbolic and numeric calculus. And finally, I go on to algebra and number theory. So over here, uh, perhaps the most interesting for people who like number theory is that we can now enumerate all the Mersenne primes, the known Mersenne primes and Mersenne prime exponents. You can convert to and from polar spherical coordinates. That looks easy, but to do it correctly is often quite hard, and we can do it now. You can specify turtle paths using the new angle path function. And the knapsack problem is one of the hardest problems in optimization, and we now have a wonderful function to do that for you automatically. So for Mersenne prime exponents, here's an example. So Mersenne prime exponent basically is a prime p, so it must be a prime itself, such that 2 raised to p minus 1 is also a prime number. So for example, if p is 2, then 2 squared is 4, and 4 minus 1 is 3. That's a prime number. So here are the first few Mersenne prime exponents. Once you've got the exponents, you can work out the primes themselves. Some of them are quite large. And the point is that these prime exponents are actually quite sparsely distributed in the list of primes. So here's a graphic which shows that. And you can see quite clearly that the red entries are the Mersenne prime exponents, and they become very sparse as you go down the list. And if you'd like further examples for this area, Here's algebra and number theory. So you have the number theory over here, the polar coordinates and spherical coordinates, which I spoke out early on, the knapsack problem, and things like the Smith decomposition, which are pretty useful in practice. So once again, the algebra and number theory area is really quite impressive for a release of Mathematica, for any release of Mathematica, because we haven't had such a nice variety in a long time, I think. OK, so to summarize, I think version 11 includes many exciting new features for pure and applied mathematics. We have, on the one hand, number theory. On the other hand, we have eigenvalue problems. So whether you're a pure mathematician or an applied mathematician, you will certainly enjoy version 11. The other point is that it's not just any particular kind of user we're aiming at. We are aiming for a wide range of users to be happy with what we did. So. If you're a college calculus student, you might want difference quotient. And if you're a very advanced researcher, you might want Mellon transform. But whoever you are and what we like to do, we have it for you in version 11. So I really feel quite happy and proud of what we've done in this area for version 11. And um, I hope that you will enjoy it too. Thank you.